Welcome to today's talk. It's uh, Saturday the 2nd of December. I want to do a bit of an update on the what's looking like a new outbreak of uh, mycoplasma pneumonia in China that we discussed a, a couple of days ago. Now, the World Health Organization do not seem to be giving much advice in terms of optimizing the immune system. And I'm, I'm going to give some evidence today that shows that lack of vitamin A deficiency is very probably a big factor in this mycoplasmic pneumonia in China. And yes, I did say vitamin A deficiency. Now, why haven't we heard of this before? Well, uh, I also... <laughs> tell you the truth i've only been learning about it for the past few weeks myself after the talk with dr david anderson and the reason we don't really know about it that commonly in in western countries is because vitamin a deficiency especially in adults in in the west is is very very rare in fact i've never seen a case whereas in children in asia it is really quite common we used to see a lot of children in asia with uh, vitamin a deficiency causing problems with the eyes so-called beto spots where you get keratinization of the white part of the eye and that can grow over the whole eye to cause complete blindness if you don't uh, give the child vitamin a so information on vitamin a and specific information today on uh, the likelihood in fact evidence from china proper evidence from china peer-reviewed literature that shows that vitamin a deficiency is a big risk factor for severe uh, mycoplasmic uh, pneumonia mycoplasma being a, a bacteria quite a simple bacteria um, it's prokaryotic like all bacteria simple organism but it doesn't have a cell wall so it's a very simple organism now just before we get into that i just want to look at the who recommendations uh, for what they're saying here so uh, based on the available information who recommends that people in china follow measures to reduce the risk of respiratory illness which include recommended vaccines against influenza, COVID-19 and other respiratory pathogens as appropriate, keeping distances from people who are ill, staying at home when ill, getting tested and medical care as needed, wearing masks as appropriate, ensuring good ventilation and practising regular hand washing. Sorry, I've drifted off there a minute. Um, so, so why aren't we seeing advice here on optimising natural immunity? Let's hope we don't need international organisations, new inventions, new medications or genetic codes or vaccines uh, or help from ph philanthropists to solve this problem. Why don't we just optimise the immune system? Anyway, that's what we're talking about today. If you want to stay around, you'd be more than welcome. Now, I'm going to start with some interesting information on vitamin A, first of all. Let's let's start off with that. Um now, um, vitamin A is also called retinol. Now, the reason it's caused this, called this is, is it's essential for the function of the retina at the back of the eye. Lack of it will cause blindness. First night blindness and then uh, overall blindness potentially later on. And of course, there's that famous story about the Second World War when the Allies invented radar and they were pinpointing targets at night and they gave this myth to the Luftwaffe that uh, it was because the British pirates were being fed on carrots. And the myth is, whether it's true or not, that they started feeding Luftwaffe uh, pilots on huge amounts of carrots. Don't know whether that's true or not, but it's a heck of a good story. Anyway, getting back, getting back to the science. Um, vitamin A has several important functions. Now, this is from the NHS itself, from their website, so we're pretty confident about this. Uh, vitamin A has several functions, helping natural defence against illness and infection. So clearly, vitamin A is necessary to prevent against illness and infection it's important for immunity to keep the immune system working properly so definitely important for immunity so if people are short of vitamin a that is going to impede their immune function thankfully in western countries very few people are uh, certainly adults and uh, vitamin a um supplements uh, are often recommended against because too much vitamin a fat soluble vitamin can cause toxicity remember the fat soluble vitamins adec a d e and k so potential for overdose on vitamin a so um certainly not advising uh, supplementation with vitamin a unless it's recommended by a medical your a medical practitioner uh, i certainly wouldn't dream of taking fat soluble vitamins apart from vitamin d um right, helping vision in dim light so for sure night blindness uh, keeping the skin and linings of some part of the body such as the nose uh, healthy so what vitamin a is needed for here it's the it's the integuments so it's needed for healthy skin 
but it's also needed for healthy uh, respiratory mucosa, the lining of the nose and the respiratory tract, and the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. So children who are short of vitamin A are more prone to respiratory infections because of the reduced quality of the integument of the respiratory tract, and also more prone to gastrointestinal infections due to the uh, suboptimal nature of the uh, integument, of the, the gastrointestinal mucosa. Um, so strange the WHO didn't mention that, but we're mentioning it now. And we're showing it's consistent with what the NHS is teaching. Now, good sources of vitamin A, um, and you'll see why we're not short of it. Cheese, I love cheese. Eggs, good, I eat eggs. Oily fish, sometimes. Um, fortified low-fat fat spreads, well, probably... I'm not sure we're still on to low fat spreads, but that, that's on the NHS website. That's just a quote, so make what you will of that. Uh, milk and yogurt, liver and liver pate. Liver, animal liver is a very uh, rich source of vitamin uh, A. Uh, very, very rich source. In fact, uh, liver can cause toxicity. So the NHS are still recommending against liver in uh, pregnant women because of the danger of toxicity to the to the unborn baby developing in the uterus. And there's also famous stories of Arctic explorers who, pretty gruesome really, but they had to eat their dogs, and that included the dog livers, and uh, they were very rich in vitamin A and some of these got a mystery illness, it was vitamin A toxicity. And the Inuit, uh, uh, the traditional people in the northern latitudes, they uh, have always known not to eat uh, polar bear liver, for example, uh, because it's very, very high in, in vitamin A. It's essentially toxic to them because the polar bears eat the uh, seals which have already in the fish so you get this bioamplification of the vitamin a and um, you end up with uh, far too much of it um, so if you're pregnant you should avoid eating liver or liver products that is a direct quote from the nhs uh, website um, excess vitamin a is toxic yes it is fat soluble vitamin and because it's fat soluble if you take too much it's difficult to excrete remember a d e k adec fat soluble vitamins now, vitamin A deficiency. Now, this is this is strange. This is what I would call um, kind of older World Health Organization. So, the World Health Organization they still put up some really good stuff, um, and this is an example from that. But it is still live. It's on their an, an alternative website, not this, uh, not this one uh, we looked at at the start, which is from this report here about the upsurge of respiratory illness amongst children in northern China, which they do blame on the myco plasma um, so this is a separate uh, thing from the who um so um what are what uh, world health organization what are the consequences and implications of vitamin a deficiency so who themselves night blindness is one of the first signs of vitamin a deficiency yes correct uh, it's more severe forms <coughs> vitamin a deficiency contributes to blindness by making the cornea the front part of the eye very dry in fact, it can, it can form like keratin, like on the surface of your skin, uh, damaging the retina and cornea, according to the WHO, of course. Clear, basic medicine. Um, an estimated quarter of a million to half a million children who are vitamin A deficiency become blind every year. So we see that vitamin A deficiency is common in children, particularly in Asia, as far as I am aware, certainly having seen and treated it uh, very often in uh, Asia, giving out um, vitamin a as appropriate in asia not recommending it at all on this video but um that th that is a common problem in uh, asia remember toxic in high, in high doses um terrible indictment half up to half a million children becoming blind through lack of vitamin a generally poor diet and uh, as i say the first thing you say is these beto spots and, uh, on the eyes and they will grow over the front but if you give the vitamin a they simply go away quite a beautiful thing to do in children that are deficient so appalling that this is still happening half of them half of them die within 12 months of losing their sight terrible vitamin a deficiency is associated with uh, morbidity and mortality uh, from common childhood infections so here the who is saying it in another place here um causes sickness and death vitamin a deficiency Vitamin A deficiency also contributes to maternal mother's uh, mortality and other poor outcomes of pregnancy and lactation also diminishes the ability to fight infections. Um, now, actually, I actually don't pretend to know the full details here. Um, I'm pretty sure it's in David Anderson's book. I'll put a link to that. But, but um, 
it's it, it works in a similar way or it works with vitamin D to promote immunity in all the immune cells of the body as far as I know and it has this additional effect on the respiratory mucosa and the gastrointestinal mucosa so very important we just don't really have a problem with it we don't really don't see it because vitamin A deficiency is so rare essentially I've never seen it in, in western countries but as we say in children in Asia it is quite common and uh, that's why it could be a big factor in this Chinese outbreak now, this this, this um, mycoplasma pneumonia, it has been reported in China, Denmark, France, Netherlands, Ohio, I think. I, I don't know the veracity of these reports yet, but um, what I'm hoping is that the we also know that antibiotic resistance in mycoplasmic pneumonia is a big problem in China. Um, huge amount of antibiotic resistance. I'm just hoping the antibiotic resistant form is not spreading around the world, but we simply... At least I don't know that yet. We are keeping an eye on this evolving uh, development, development because the concerning thing is, of course, this is affecting children. Unlike COVID, uh, this is uh, primarily affecting children uh, in the Chinese situation at the moment. And we don't want that all around the world because um, childhood illness would be potentially uh, catastrophic, of course. Um, now... Uh, even mild subclinical deficiency uh, can be a problem uh, because it may increase children's risk for respiratory and diarrheal infections. So again, respiratory mucosa uh, and uh, the gastrointestinal mucosa don't work properly, don't function properly in the absence of vitamin A. I hope I'm saying vitamin A, not vitamin D. <laughs> I think I am so far, vitamin A. Of course, vitamin D is necessary as well, but vitamin A is specifically identified in this uh, in this uh, release from the WHO. Decreasing growth rates, slow bone development, and uh, decreases the likelihood of survival from serious illness. Again, without the vitamin A, you're not going to get the, immuno, uh, the, the immunocompetence. Now, we, we list, listed those foods there that contain vitamin A. So cheese, eggs, oily fish... Um, Fortified uh, low-fat spreads, milk and yogurt, liver and pate, um, liver pate. So they're the foods that contain vitamin A. But the the other thing that um, vitamin uh, we can get the other way we can get vitamin A is from beta carotene. Now carotene was first identified in carrots, of course. Um, uh, so the body can convert beta carotene into vitamin A. So two ways to get your vitamin A directly from the vitamin A itself. Great but also from eating particularly fruit and vegetables with beta carotene in it beta carotene in it that the body will then convert into vitamin a so beta carotene is a precursor of vitamin a and the good thing about uh, beta carotene is the body will only convert it into vitamin a as the body needs it so it's it's much harder to overdose in fact i've never heard of an overdose of beta carotene i think it can happen but very very high amounts um and uh Certainly eating it from a normal diet would, would be absolutely fine and is, is, is good, of course. So um, beta carotene converted into vitamin A as the body requires it. So let's have a look at this uh, beta carotene. So another way to get vitamin A. So it's in red, particularly orange pigments in plants and fruits. So a reddish or particularly orange fruit, therefore carrots, of course, remarkably high in beta carotene. First identified, of course, in carrots, hence the name especially carrots and colourful vegetables, the body converts beta carotene into vitamin A. The advantage of dietary beta carotene is that the body only converts as much as it needs. But also, beta carotene is a healthy antioxidant. There's evidence from this scientific paper here it may prevent cognitive decline and dementia. And there's evidence from this scientific paper here that beta carotene may help lung function. Remember, we're talking about beta carotene now, not the vitamin A. Uh, both may be uh, both may prevent oxidative stress so what seems to be happening is that the beta carotene is acting as an antioxidant it's mopping up your free radicals so normally cell metabolism you're going to get the production of free radicals they can oxidize things like dna in the cell oxidize the organelles in the cell cause cell damage cause genetic damage leading to disease cancers for example atherosclerosis other diseases um, so if the beta carotene is preventing the oxidative stress, that is a good thing. That may be, may be how it's working. Um, it's certainly well, very likely to be one of the modalities of action, if not the main modality of action. 
Foods rich in beta carotene, as you would expect, a variety of fruit and vegetables, particularly coloured ones, um, contain the uh, beta carotene. That's why we have this saying, uh, eat a rainbow. E eating a wide variety of coloured fruit and vegetables is a good thing because of these polyphenols, the, the antioxidants, the, uh, the flavonoids, which are all remarkably good for us. Um, and of course the fruit and vegetables also contribute to the microbiome so it's, it's good good all, all round uh, for the vast majority of people role of vitamin a in the immune system now this is from this paper here i'm not going to go into this in detail now but it's clear it's needed for mucous membrane uh, innate immunity so protecting us from a wide range of organisms through the respiratory tract and the gastrointestinal tract and essential for normal function of many immune cells such as uh, T lymphocytes so this double immune effect stopping a wide range of organisms uh, getting into the uh, into the respiratory tract from the the lining of the respiratory tract and and, and uh, that's the innate immunity and then playing an important role in specific acquired immunity as we make a resistance to specific organisms that or parts of organisms that we've encountered um, as it's necessary the, for the function of uh, the vitamin A is necessary for the function of immune cells, such as T lymphocytes in this specific uh, example. So there we see uh, that's the first part of this video on um, the importance of um, vitamin A generally and for immunity specifically. Now um, I'm going to carry on now and look at the research from China. Now, I know people might be getting a bit bored by now, so I'll put this up as a whole video at first and then I'll put it up as two halves so you can um, watch the whole thing or watch in two lumps, whatever you would like. Um, but it's some pretty interesting stuff, actually, and it really is bemusing that the WHO uh, forget. Well, I don't know if they forgot, but they, they didn't put it on their website anyway when they were talking about those other things that we are already uh, aware of and have been, it's fair to say, have been discussed on other platforms um, <laughs> uh, right let's get, <laughs> sorry uh, let, let, let's in serious matter let's get on with it let's get let's get on with it get on with this uh, vitamin a deficiency this is the paper is associated with severe mycoplasma pneumonia now that's in italics because that's the name of the organism that's the name of the bacteria mycoplasma pneumonia that's how you pronounce it, pneumonia, uh, is the organism, and that causes mycoplasma pneumonia pneumonia. A pneumonia, of course, is the uh, infection in the lower parts of the lungs, in the alveoli, particularly vital for gaseous exchange. Now, uh, this, paper, this research was actually done in Beijing, where, coincidentally, this outbreak occurs. So, particularly surprising, so... Presumably in its library, the WHO have got a copy of this paper of a particular deficiency with this particular mycoplasma pneumonia disease identified in 2020. And yet when there's an outbreak of this specific disease in this specific area, they, they don't mention it on their press release. Anyway, can't explain that, but... Right, so this was done in Beijing, where this outbreak of the mycoplasma currently is. Uh, 122 children that got sick, 0 to 15 years of age. Now, it doesn't sound like many for a research study, but these are all children that got sick, so it's a pretty good sample from that size. Now, uh, 52 had a severe uh, mycoplasma pneumonia, pneumonia, so the severe form of the pneumonia. Um, 70 had uh, the non-severe form so they still had the pneumonia but they weren't as ill so 52 were very ill uh, 70 were infected with pneumonia still had pneumonia so this infection was still in the tissue of the lung that's probably the simplest definition of pneumonia infection in the tissue of the lung as opposed to bronchitis which would be the upper uh, upper airways pneumonia is the lung tissue itself the lung parenchyma, the alveoli, the gaseous exchange areas of the lung. Now, a very interesting study. Serum levels of vitamin A, D and E were measured and compared and correlated with severe uh, mycoplasma and, uh, sorry, non-severe mycoplasma and less severe mycoplasma. Now, what did they find? Very interesting. 
Uh, the age uh, was older in the severe cases, uh, the severe children, than in the non-severe. So the age was older in the severe ones. So these ones had the more severe disease, average age of 7.12 years as opposed to 4.0 years. So that is uh, that is interesting. The age was older in the severe ones. So looks like these children had more severe disease and slightly older children. Uh, so older children suffer more severe infections. Right now, vitamin A deficiency was present in both the non-severe uh, mycoplasma pneumonia and the severe mycoplasma pneumonia. So both had vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin A levels were significantly lower in the severe ones. Uh, than the non-severe levels. So what we see is the children with the most severe form of the uh, mycoplasma pneumonia, um, the, people with, the children with the most severe forms of the pneumonia had the lowest levels of vitamin A. The children with the higher levels of vitamin A had the less severe form. So lower vitamin A levels, more severe disease. Higher vitamin A levels, less severe disease and these were very statistically significant when they did the statistical analysis of this um, and they were the vitamin a levels that they found with, with error bars that they're just rough figures vitamin a deficiency was defined at less than um, 0.2 milligrams per liter so we see here um, well these are less that's well less than 0.2 isn't it so even these children here with 0.19 with the less severe disease still had deficiency they were still below the 0.2 so what we're seeing is the majority of children with non-severe and severe mycoplasma pneumonia had vitamin a deficiency but the children with the lowest levels of vitamin a had the most severe mycoplasma disease it's it's a pretty clear correlation um Subclinical deficiency was 0.2 to 0.3. Normal range was 0.3 to 0.7. So we see normal range 0.3 to 0.7, and the people with the, uh, the the most severe form of the disease only had 0.15. Um, we can see that the levels were really quite uh, low. Um, that's about what five times lower than, than that approximately. So um, quite uh, quite interesting correlation there and of course doesn't necessarily tell you it's causal but we know that vitamin a is so important in immunity anyway you would surely think it's something well worth thinking about right so children with lower vitamin a levels suffered more severe infections children with lower vitamin a levels suffered more severe infections vitamin e and d levels were also measured in children with severe samples and these are the figures that they found the, the blood levels that they found there uh, but both the severe and the non-severe did not show deficiency of vitamins E and D. So this is the key thing here. So they looked at vitamins uh, A and found that um, there was a lot of children deficient in vitamin A. And the children that were more deficient had more severe disease. And the children with suboptimal levels were more likely to get even non-severe pneumonia. But in this population, they didn't find a lot of deficiency in vitamin E and vitamin D. So it's vitamin A which seems to be the problem in this particular population. And as I say, I've seen this commonly in uh, Asia. Uh, I've seen vitamin A deficiency in children in uh, India, uh, several parts of India, um, Cambodia, Thailand, common in Asia. Uh, don't know specifically about China, haven't worked there. But, um, but this, did, this study clearly showed from the Beijing doctors and scientists that it is a big problem there. Um, Vitamin A deficiency odds ratio was heck. It's like, it's like that's like a thousand times more likely to get really sick, uh, up to about a third more likely to get really sick. So e even if it's only like a, a third more likely to get sick with optimized vitamin A levels, um, that's well worth doing. And it could be it could be that because this is due to the small sample size that we've got these wide error bars. So it could be that children with high vitamin A levels are a thousand times or adequate. Vitamin A levels are a thousand times less likely to get disease or three times less likely to get disease. But even if it's anywhere between those, hey, that is worth having. And let's notice here that this is a very unlikely, the P, here, P is 0 0.009, very unlikely that this arose chance, uh, that this result arose by chance. So this is protecting against severe 
uh, mycoplasma pneumonia. Deficiency uh, of vitamin A, vitamin A deficiency under six years now. So under the age of six, 85% of children were deficient in vitamin A. Uh, over the age of six, 62.5% of children. So in this area in Beijing, um, they found the children coming in who were ill, 85% of these children were short of uh, vitamin A, well, between 62.5 and 85% short of vitamin A. So we've got all these factors. We know that vitamin A is necessary for mucosal immunity. We know that vitamin A is necessary for the normal functioning, working with vitamin D in the normal function of, as far as I know, all the immune cells in the body, but certainly the T lymphocytes, as we looked at that specific research study on. So we know it's necessary for mucosal immunity. Uh, we know it's necessary for the... Um, functioning of the white blood cells, the immune cells, and, and other cells. Um, we know that up to 85% of children were deficient. The children that were most deficient had the most severe disease. It's a pretty compelling case for op op testing the vitamin A levels in these children and optimising the vitamin A levels in these children. And uh, the, the authors do really seem to firmly believe this. Vitamin A supplement could reduce the incidence of severe mycoplasmic pneumonia this is the author now the authors can't say this based on the study that they did but this is based on their reading of the adjacent literature and putting everything together as we have just done so really very likely now the conclusions that the authors come to here and again i think it goes without saying isn't that vitamin a is remarkably cheap <laughs> remarkably cheap um, new drugs perhaps to treat Mycoplasma pneumonia could end up being expensive. I mean, maybe not, but who, who knows? Expensive drugs could be invented. Could be. Never know. But vitamin A, essentially free. Right, conclusions of the author. Authors, vitamin A deficiency is associated with severe uh, mycoplasma pneumonia and more likely present, present in the younger uh, children. Um, now I, I know there's some conflict here with the age levels but do, do just go with this general conclusion it does make sense therefore it's important to monitor the supplement and supplement vitamin A in mycoplasma pneumonia 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 patients so let's just clarify that this is what the authors are saying therefore it is important to monitor and supplement vitamin A in mycoplasma pneumonia pneumonia patients these children and that seems to be what's causing this outbreak in china at the moment now this is potentially good news for western countries because although there has been this mycoplasma pneumonia in increases in the amount we're seeing in in china denmark france netherlands possibly in ohio there's more of that there um, but in Western countries, adults and uh, children are much less likely to be vitamin A deficient. But it does show the importance of uh, monitoring this and uh, doing doing. Uh, we we need to do much more nutritional screening than we are doing. Uh, we've talked about this in the context of vitamin D, but it now looks like it's also the case for vitamin A. But a basic nutritional, uh, you know, talking about what diet children eat and, and talking to mothers about diet uh, and as long as the food's available could potentially well i would have thought completely essentially completely eliminate vitamin a deficiency so a very obvious thing to do therefore it's important to monitor and supplement vitamin a in mycoplasma pneumonia patients so problem in asia um, could this spread to areas of the world pakistan bangladesh india uh, southeast asia where vitamin A deficiency is more common in children, I'm afraid that is a real possibility. Is it likely to be a particularly big problem in Western countries where vitamin A deficiency is not there? We would hope significantly less so. The other variable here, of course, is, is there some new virus in China? Now, of course, the mycoplasma is not a virus. It is a uh, bacterium. So what am I talking about? Well, any viral infection of the respiratory passages is going to predispose potentially predispose to secondary bacterial infection 
So is there some new virus going around in China, spreading rapidly, predisposing many children to the mycoplasma pneumonia, exacerbated by the deficiency in vitamin A? If there is a new virus, of course, that virus could potentially spread, causing respiratory infections around the world and therefore increasing the probability of uh, post-viral bacterial respiratory uh, infections. We simply don't have the data to answer that question. Just a few more details from the paper. Mycoplasma pneumonia frequently causes community-acquired pneumonia in children, and this occurs throughout the year. So very often we don't have the seasonality. That's why the seasonality in China could be secondary, secondary uh, to viral infection. That's quite possible. Can be transmitted by droplets, presumably by aerosols. Children of all ages are susceptible, particularly if they're short of vitamin A, it would appear. In recent years, the number of children with uh, mycoplasma pneumonia has increased, so it's becoming more common, at least in China. And they have a prolonged course of the disease. So what these authors are saying is there's more of this around in China, more of it, and the children are getting sicker. The disease is taking longer for the children to clear, which is why they're so keen to publicise their findings on vitamin A deficiency. Typical symptoms, fever, wheezing, difficulty in breathing, chest pain and chills. Uh, mycoplasma pneumonia, particularly refractory or severe, often results in pleural effusions, atelectasis, so pleural effusions, collection of fluid around the pleural membranes. Atelectasis is uh, problems with the lower airways particularly, and other organ damage. Now, uh, if it's uh, particularly severe, so, so severe means the disease is severe. Refractory means basically it's not responding to treatment. Uh, and this is a problem because of the antibiotic resistance. So part of this could be the antibiotic resistance, which we reported on in the last study, uh, again, from data, uh, from peer-reviewed information from China. Vitamin deficiencies lead to higher incidence of respiratory and digestive diseases particularly, diseases, particularly in children. So again, yes, we know this is true because it, the vitamin uh, A deficiency uh, reduces the quality, the, the, uh, the, uh, the integrity of the external and uh, respiratory and gastrointestinal integuments. Vitamin, uh, but vitamins also significantly impact on disease prognosis. So children that are short of vitamins generally, they're going to stay sicker for longer and they're less likely to recover. Uh, our, our findings show that vitamin deficiency, vitamin A deficiency um, was significantly correlated with severe mycoplasma pneumonia and more likely occurred in the younger children. Vitamin A plays an important pleiotrophic role in supporting normal mucosa barrier. It does many things in supporting the normal mucosal barrier. So important to stop the disease getting in in the first place. So hopefully most diseases is not, not doesn't get into the body, uh, tissues, fluid spaces at all um, because it's, uh, it's prevented from getting in there through the mucosal barriers. It's only when it gets through into the systemic parts of the body that the white cells need to kick in and do their job so um, working on both levels as we said with the result of increasing risk of invasive pathogens so you get invasive pathogens if they get through the barrier if they get through the mucus of the respiratory tract if they get through the uh, mucus of the gastrointestinal tract then they're more likely to get into the um, the, uh, the the areas inside the body that should be sterile um, more information still from this paper. Uh, children who uh, presented vitamin A deficiency were more likely to get an acute respiratory tract infection and diarrhea. So again, vitamin A preventing uh, respiratory and diarrhea illness. It regulates cytokines, so they're more likely to get sick of the short of vitamin A. The function of macrophages, that's these eating cells, big eating cells, Neutrophils and natural killer cells were impaired. Neutrophils are particularly active as antiviral, uh, sorry, as antibacterial cells. And natural killer cells, which will kill virally infected cells. So it's working against a range of organisms here with a range of whites and blood cells. 
And the protective function of the respiratory mucosa was also decreased in the deficiency of vitamin A, as we've said. So um, quite clear in the author's conclusions. Um, vitamin A deficient rats of uh, thicker alveolar basement membranes. That doesn't sound good, does it? Um, so again, experimental evidence from animals being consistent. All this is consistent. It all seems to be adding up to a very coherent uh, picture. Um, the incidence and severity of infectious diseases are increased in vitamin A deficient children. This is simply what doctors and nurses see on the ground. Epidemiological surveys show that the incidence of vitamin A deficiency uh, is significantly associated with age. The younger the age, the higher the incidence of vitamin A deficiency. This is a problem in children. And we've seen that this uh, mycoplasma pneumonia is primarily a problem of children in China. Um, the younger the age, the higher the incidence of vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin A deficiency was associated with severe uh, mycoplasma pneumonia and the supplementation of vitamin A may reduce the occurrence of severe disease in children. Makes perfect sense. Several studies showed that supplementation of vitamin A could reduce the incidence of respiratory infections and shorten the course of their disease. Good. Strange the WHO didn't mention this. Uh, vitamin A deficiency was more likely uh, present in, in, in uh, younger, severe pa patients with severe mycoplasma and pneumonia, suggesting that supplementation of vitamin A is more important in younger children who have potential uh, mycoplasma pneumonia infection. Final thing, congratulations if you're still here. Um, <coughs> in our study, although we did not find a significant correlation between vitamins E and D levels with uh, non-severe and severe pneumonia, uh, vitamins D and E should be maintained at at least the normal levels. It's just that they didn't find the deficiency in this study. So it all kind of hangs together there. The vitamin A deficiency could be a big factor. If this is the case, it's probably good news for Western countries. The as far as we know, many thousands and thousands of children being admitted to hospital in China um, might not occur in countries which have uh, adequate levels of vitamin A in their children. But I am concerned for Asian, poor, uh, particularly poorer areas, rural areas, slum areas of uh, Asian uh, countries where vitamin A deficiency is highly prevalent. Uh, this could lead to a big problem for the children of Asia. And you would think, ideally, what we would have is an international organisation that would say, you know what, um, there's a big risk here of mycoplasmic pneumonia in children, and we know that lack of vitamin A is a big factor in this disease. Therefore, let's start optimising the vitamin A levels in children with vitamin E and D as necessary and nutrients. Optimise the immune efficiency of these children and make it much more or less likely they'll get disease. And if they do get disease, make it less likely they get severe disease. Pity we haven't got such an, an I mean, what could we call an organisation like that that would do that? Anyway, uh, can't think of anything at the moment, but um, food for thought. Indeed. And uh, if we do this, hopefully we won't need um, new, novel, expensive, experimental treatments. Having said that, new treatments are always good, as long as they're affordable by people, uh, as long as people can afford them. Um, but of course, prevention is always better than cure. Thank you for watching.